Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Dave's faves. And my particular fave today is Beethoven's Third Piano Concerto. Oh, it's so hard doing the Beethoven piano concertos because, first of all, every pianist worth their salt has recorded them, and many of them do them extremely well. They really do. And then, on the other hand, you can't get them singly, really. You're always going to get a couple concertos, so you're going to wind up with lots of duplication as you collect your Beethoven concertos. And that's not a bad thing, as long as both performances of the disc are equally good. And quite often they are. They really are. The third piano concerto is... I think it's the toughest of all of them to really to really get away with. I mean, maybe the fourth is harder, but you know, because it has more subtlety and, and sort of thoughtfulness attached to it. But on the other hand, you know, the fourth, the slow movement's really quick, and the fourth movement's really short. Pardon me. You know, in the fourth concerto, and it's really obvious what it's doing. You know, Orpheus taming the wild beasts or whatever imagery you want. But that's it. It's the orchestra versus the piano. And it works really well. And then the finale is just really, really energetic and lithe and springy. And it doesn't pose any special problems. The third is tough. The third is, you know, the first great amalgam of concerto and symphony a la Beethoven. I mean, Mozart had done that, you know, <laughs> decades before. But but most people didn't really understand Mozart's concerto form, including Beethoven, who only got it, according to Tovey, and I think Tovey was right, um, with the fourth concerto. But the third concerto is really symphonic, and it's in C minor, which is, you know, Beethoven's, you know, major, major, his big, his personal minor key, like that of the Fifth Symphony, and it's quite long. I think it may be the longest of all of them. I don't know. It's, it's, it's long. It's a big, big piece. Let us not kid ourselves. I mean, it really is. I played, I played timpani in this um, when I was an, an undergrad. Let me see, it's 15, 25, 35 minutes. Okay. Well, maybe it's not the longest, but it often sounds like it is because you've got 19, 10, yeah, no, it's not the longest. I was making that up. But it really is, it, it's a big work. It has that impression of size, and I think the reason it has the impression of size, and here I know I'm on sound footing. I really do. I got the timing right here in front of me. I'm looking at it. Oh, my God! No, it has a very big slow movement, and it's a very slow, slow movement. It's a largo, and it's exquisitely beautiful, but really, really, really poetic and still and lengthy. Well, 10 minutes, but it's... It, 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 again, it, the whole concerto has this feeling of bigness about it. And you, you really need to kind of, you know, I mean, it is Beethoven's longest piano concerto slow movement. That I can guarantee. It definitely is that. And so, and so you have to capture, first of all, the C minor-ish quality of it. And second of all, there's, there's, the, that's the cat. Are you all right, Peepo? She's fine. She does that sometimes. You know, when you have a 20-year-old cat, sometimes they, they yell at you for no reason. Anyway, so where were we? We were talking about how big and tough this is. And this is the performance that I was talking about. It's Rudolf Serkin with Leonard Bernstein. Because Rudolf Serkin was a fantastic Beethoven pianist. He recorded these concertos multiple times, of course. And this is like the stereo one. It's certainly not the last one the last ones weren't so good, you know. Remember, remember those Telarc ones with Azawa in Boston? He was way past his prime. But this is terrific. It comes with a terrific Emperor Concerto as well. It's absolutely brilliant. And, and you know, like I said, there are many very fine Beethoven Third Piano Concerti, but I reach for this one because, in my opinion, First of all, Bernstein is nicely eruptive in the orchestral episodes. It has a nice feeling of angst and struggle. It's not easy, it's not slick, and it's not small. You know, like the period instrument people sometimes, it, yeah, they, they have like louder trumpets and drums sometimes, you know, than the regular orchestras, but they also are teeny, 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 tiny sounding. And that diminishes the impact of the piece. This is a grand concerto with trumpets and drums, a military concerto. And it has to have that feeling of power. And this has got that. And Serkin, you know, Serkin is, is a, 
he was not a, a glamorous pianist. He didn't have, like Claudio Oral, for example, or Moravets, you know, big, rich, yummy tone or anything like that. No, he was sort of gaunt. He had a, they, they call his sonority flinty, flinty, which means it sort of it had a little edge, a little sharpness to it. It wasn't seductive in quiet passages. It, it made you listen for truth rather than beauty. That doesn't mean he didn't play beautifully. Of course he did. But, you know, the general impression you get is a certain austerity with a rhythmic firmness, and it just suits this concerto. It really does. I'm not as big a fan of his in, like, the fourth concerto. I think that requires just a little bit more sexiness than Serkin often was willing to, to provide. But in this one, he nails it absolutely nails it. I think it's one of the great performances of the third, and I don't care if it isn't because it's the one I love the most. It's on Sony. It's wonderful. It's in the Circuit box. It's in the other box. It's in everybody's box. It's just terrific. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care. <laughs>